agenda. Uh, may I have a motion to adopt agenda? So we move. So we have put it first. Um all in favor? Aye. 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 Um item E is the consent calendar and we will be discussing the we actually should not be discussing consent calendar because it should be approved as in one clean sweep. Um, if the board members feel that any items need to be pulled for discussion, um, they can request to do so. Other than that, um, may I have a motion to approve the consent calendar? A motion to approve the consent calendar. Second. Um, the motions. Um, um, I'll take the comment from the public on the consent calendar. Anyone? Yes, I do. Um, okay, so uh, I was looking through this. I noticed uh, we paid somebody $800 for uh, music in the park. And I assume is, she's represented by Bill Hansel and Hansel's uh, um, Hansel's company, who is also organizing everything, which seems like an inherent uh, conflict of interest, but um, is, first of all, I guess, is that true? Is she represented by Bill Hansel, and is uh, that a typical amount paid to uh, talent for Friday's uh, music in the park? I don't know if this person is represented by Bill Hansel. Um, she may have an agent that I'm unaware of. Um, the questions regarding specific bills, or would, it would be better self served asking Tiffany off the record um, rather than asking the board because I just don't have all the information in front of me to be able to answer your question uh, accurately. But you would agree that it's a conflict of interest? I cannot agree with this because... Um, really? I don't really know what we're talking about. If, I am not aware if he's organizing it is, and also uh, profiting from it. Presented by Bill Hansel or not? Okay. So. Well, that uh, we know that's true. It has been true in the past. Uh, okay. That's all I have. Um, may um, let's. Uh, oh, sorry. You had. Thank you. So. Um, Yes, let's call the question. All in favor to approve the consent calendar? Aye. 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 And uh, we'll move to public comment. No, not public comment, open time for items not on the agenda. And um, nothing from Linda, Steve? Yeah. So, um, as you probably all heard, I was at the uh, LAFCO meeting. Eric was also there and uh, he responded to a letter that I had submitted to LAFCO concerning some of the issues concerning uh, conflict of interest, uh, accounting irregularities, and uh, accountability. I, I want to make you aware of that. I am certainly recommending that there be a, a significant uh, uh, reorganization of the Marinwood CSD because it seems like we have all these problems and there's no incentive to fix them. I would hope that there would be, but uh, I would note that uh, the Little Hoover Commission has identified the types of problems with special districts and it seems like we have a lot of those problems. And I urge uh, each one of the board members to become involved in the uh, uh, this process with LAFCO um, and I'll be happy to discuss anything offline you want on my criticisms and suggestions on how we could make the uh, district more responsive to the community. Thank you. Um, given no other public comment, we'll move on to item G, which is district matters, starting with fiscal year 18-19 year end profit and loss financial statements pre-audit, and we'll hand it off to the district manager. Thank you. Uh, I gave you a pretty detailed memo and some detailed uh, notes at the end of the statement itself. Um, 
I'm just trying to paint a, uh, a clear picture. You know, from an operating perspective this year, we did very well in terms of cash management and revenues versus expenditures. Uh, I'm expecting a, a total net gain strictly for the year of about $885,000. Again, this is pre-audit. Uh, Obviously, the big contributors were taxes that uh, beat expectations by approximately $100,000. Uh, also, when you look at that $885,000, uh, bear in mind that that does not account for the capital reserves designation that the board has of $100,000. It doesn't show up in a P&L because it is not actually an expenditure. Uh, so that should bring that down a little bit that we do place it in the budget just to used for exactly that budgeting purposes uh, and then uh, it just by maintaining a positive cash flow and a, uh, and a good cash balance we pulled about 44,000 in interest off of our uh, funds held with the Treasury account so all of those are good I did uh, kind of give you a, you know a little bit of a reality check note here at the end um, going into uh, talking about the district's long-term liabilities uh, while the numbers are big, it should be pointed out that our OPEB liability has actually decreased um, by almost $2 million, uh, and that is due strictly to the starting of the OPEB trust, uh, as well as the district's policy to do a minimum $60,000 contribution, so that not only changes the discount rate, but it also changes what the district has to offset. Uh, I actually expect that to go down more with the next full valuation, which will happen next year, uh, primarily because we've limited to full-time positions that normally would be recruiting uh, OPEB benefits, as well as that we have been depositing significantly more, about 40% more than the 60% by depositing 100000 every year into our trust fund. Uh, so those numbers will shake out and then uh, we'll do a, a new full census with the next OPEB uh, actuarial report. Uh, and then I definitely listed out our current accrued pension liabilities. Uh, those numbers aren't going down primarily because the uh, uh, calipers can't really seem to meet their target investment returns. Uh, and then you also have to keep in mind that the numbers I presented here are actually a little over a year old. I'm expecting at some point this month, CalPERS will release new actuarial valuations. Uh, that'll be dated as of 6-30-18, um, at which point we will be able to give you a new update um, and then recognizing that the one most likely that's going to be dated 6-30-19 is going to show more of the changes that might have some level of impact with staff reductions and things like that that took place during that year. So definitely something to keep an eye on. Uh, just because we did good this year doesn't mean that the rain doesn't fall harder next year. So we will uh, keep being judicious with our spending and our cash management. Um, otherwise, if there's any questions beyond the one note that I did forget, not forget, but just didn't make it put in there that I should. Uh, on the fire side, on the expenditures for account 5210146 for independent contractor, uh, there isn't a budget line for that because at the time the budget was created, it wasn't set up, but those are where we record uh, fees paid to the city of San Rafael for cheap grant services. Can you pick up 521? 5210146. Is this the last year CalPERS quantitative easing? Is this where they get down to seven percent flat? Um, I, I actually believe so. Yes, mm -hmm. coming up with this again. One. That's going to be another ratcheting. Right, right. Yeah, which fine. we will then see. This valuation will give us a better picture of what next year's UAL payments will be, so on mm -hmm. and so forth, as well as they do their eight-year, six-year projection into the future of uh, kind of guesstimated, but all of that is guesstimated based on that they'll hit their, this, uh, they'll hit their rate of return that they plan on. Sure. So, but yes, I believe that this is the area that goes down finally to seven because it went from seven and a half to like seven three five and then down to seven two five and now down to seven. Right. And again, just as a reminder for everybody, all those people who do not work for CalPERS or um, have a pension believe that the discount rate should be closer to 4%, which would bankrupt everyone in California, including the state. So, 
pretty sobering picture as far as pensions are concerned. Otherwise, no question. Anybody? No. Um, I just want to thank Eric for preparing an excellent um, budget and um, point out that thanks to shifting of board's priorities, thanks to uh, Director Naylor, and attacking the op-ed, um, we're <clears throat> making progress and um, it shows. Um, Eric is um, doing a fabulous job managing cash for the district and um, doing everything um, he can to um, deliver these good results. However, the, the big animal of CalPERS, we can't really do much about. And um, that's really what is our biggest headache. <clears throat> so um, it's not an action item. Uh, we don't need motions, but um, if there is nothing else from the board, I will take public comment. Yeah, I need some clarity on the independent contractor fees. So is this just uh, Chief Grace? Um, uh, what we pay for Chief Grace under the fire one? Yes. So it's two hundred and twelve thousand. I thought it was a uh, hundred thousand dollar contract. Are you adding something else in there? If you look under the fire pages, it is no under un, under the. I mean, it's a big budget item, and I'm, I'm just wondering what if, if that's the only expense being captured there. Two hundred twelve thousand dollars for uh, the services of Chief Gray. No, the services, Chief Officer yes. Services was 64213 which is listed on page 9 of the top line under the fire department. Okay, what else is in the independent contractor fees? Rec contractors. Rec contractors, mm -hmm. meaning, uh, meaning what? If you meaning people who come out and do rec classes that aren't employees of the district. Also, within the independent contractor fees can be things like uh, accountants or anybody else who comes out. And what, what about employees that work on the weekends or yeah. some of the other? Well, like the, for example, the light guards doing uh, pool or doing swim lessons. I know they get paid like thirty-five bucks an they hour. They get paid through payroll. Okay, and so none of these uh, employees or contractors are getting um, retirement benefits or health benefits or anything else. Is no, that through, they don't. through the district. So, All right. Um, well, I, I, I think it's, it's pretty, it, it could be broken out a little bit in finer detail than just a big chunk of $200,000. And, and so if you really do want to be transparent, you, you need to uh, break it out a little bit more so we can track expenses. But that's, that's really all my comments. So um, in the future, I would recommend contacting Eric directly um, to get it offline so we don't have to witness the back and forth because um, in the board's opinion, this is a solid budget. And if you have any questions. It's a vague budget. It's um, just, no, it, it, it's vague. I'm not going to argue. Um, $200,000 that's ill-defined is vague. Again, the board meeting is for the board with staff. You can witness the meeting and it's ask questions, but it is not a back and forth between you and the district manager. Again, I recommend contacting the district manager offline so he can give you more detail about your concerns. Or and, and it should, your it's, it's, it's the, the town's concerns, Thank you. the CSD's yeah. concerns. So, um, Linda, do you have anything? Um, so we'll move to the district manager's report. Can I go back for just one second, Isabella, without making anybody feel upset with me? Um, I do want to point out that we came a little about uh, 53000 under budget in independent contractor fees on the rec set. Mm -hmm. Well, you, you have another line item, recreational programs, um, supplies, uh, and services. Me, That's um, 264000 so, so what does that mean? On so we're spending $500,000? In those categories? District manager's report. That's what we're on right now. Thank you. So you you really actually don't want to discuss a budget. Is that what you're saying, Jack? I don't want you to interrupt the meeting. You're out of order. I'm not out of order. I'm trying to get some facts established so we can understand where 
money is being spent in this district. This is the reason I went to LAFCO and suggested a, a reorganization. Right. Because you're hiding expenses, you're hiding, you're hiding activities that you do not have a right to hide. There's laws that protect the public which are being ignored. I thank you for um, writing down your hallucinations for LAFCO. So now and you don't need to insult me like a, that. A broader public now. Your hallucinations. Should I call you an old man? An no. old fart? Should I call you an old uh, fart? Uh, uh, Is that a point of order? Wasn't it a point of order when he was calling my, my, my concerns hallucinations? Right, it's in three minutes. We're done. Let's move on. Uh, I stand up for what's right. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Eric, okay. go ahead. Okay, district man, don't worry that over yeah, will yeah, not be yeah. bullied. Uh, okay, uh, I give you a couple updates on here. Uh, there's not a real a lot of reason to go too into detail on any of them. Um, the sink or just waiting for the county to issue a notice of exemption, so that way we can proceed with that project. The uh, facility replacement, we had some civil engineering that the county is requiring as part of the design review process, so we're finishing that up with the licensed civil engineer. Uh, LAFCO uh, Municipal Service Review, I did submit two letters, uh, one refuted uh, comments made by Mr. Nessel, another one was in response to the study itself. Uh, and then uh, just some other items of notes, um, we finished up with special taxes uh, for the upcoming fiscal year. I am expecting a slight increase, all of about a few thousand dollars more than what was budgeted on that, that's primarily due to uh, uh, remodels and uh, additional square footage added to homes throughout the course of the year from the data that we had last year. Um, on an exciting note, um, the Marine County Open Space District has started work up on the Ponte Trail project. Um, I'm expecting to actually go up there pretty soon to see how they're doing, but all of those agreements are in place and I believe that uh, they were finalized by the County Board of Supervisors actually at their meeting today. Uh, and then uh, we have uh, provided year-end billing, received payment uh, very promptly from the City of Santa Fe in regards to all shared services over time, as well as a uh, paramedic incentive reimbursement that is also part of the shared services agreement. I do want to bring one other item up that I had a phone call today with the aid from Supervisor Katie Rice's office. They have put together a group uh, I'm going to share an email with you guys. Uh, they have put together a group that had, uh, uh, is, it consists of elected officials from every city and uh, now uh, fire districts as well. They uh, are looking for an elected official from Marinwood who would be willing to join this group. It basically was formed, I want to say, kind of in conjunction with the grand jury report and they're looking at countywide wildland uh, fire stuff. I know that there are several working groups going on for this right now, so hopefully this kind of gets cold into one group at some point in time. I know Chief Gray's been very active on it. Uh, obviously you have the grand jury stuff, you have now a group of electives. Um, the one thing to keep in mind on this is they're wondering if there's any chance we might have a board member who would be willing to go to their next meeting, which is this coming Monday, August 19th at 3 p.m. at the Civic Center. So I don't need to know immediately unless somebody wants to step up and volunteer. I told them that I would get back to them, and if you want to have this a larger discussion, uh, we can always place it on a later agenda and appoint somebody that way. But I don't know that you need a separate agenda item for this. I can't go, but I would mind going in general. But I can't go well, I don't have a day job anymore, so I'm going to do Okay. Unless somebody else wants to take my place. Well, I can't go this time, wait, so if you want to go. They're looking for a permanent assignment? Uh, I think so. I don't know how permanent this group is, per se. Um, they have meetings scheduled through November at this point in time. Uh, this is quarterly. Uh, no, it's it's a monthly. This this particular one is a monthly meeting. They have August, September, October, and November scheduled. No, you're right. Okay. And like I said, it's a, a basically consists of one one elected official from each town, and then uh, 
they quickly realized that they had forgotten some of the fire districts that were pulled in, like Southern Marine Fire, as well as uh, Nevada Fire Protection District, and then realized that there was nobody from our little district on there. So uh, the A gave me a phone call and then forwarded this email to me, and I said, I can bring it up in my management report tonight, seeing as how your meeting is in. Six, six days. Yeah. So, Jeff, thank you so much for volunteering, and uh, you guys can discuss yeah. who would like to go moving forward. Point of order. I'm sorry, I could not hear very well. I know it sounded like you volunteered and he volunteered. Are they going to work She it cannot out? attend this meeting I didn't come this, month. this Monday. Jeff is going to the meeting on Monday. But I said that I was interested in going in the other one. Nobody could come yet. Oh, okay, so they're going to work it out for some. Yes. yes. Okay, thank you. Now, before you go on to the next item on the agenda, you're going to ask for public comments. That's what managers. I was about to do. Are, thank you. Are we still on? Thank you. Yeah, we're still on, yeah, we're still on the district manager's report. I believe you finished with your report yeah. and this was an add-on item because of it was last minute so uh, let me just uh, first see if there are any questions from the board I have a comment. Um, in attending the LAFCO meeting the other night um, I appreciated much of what Sashi McEntee had to say um, at the end of the meeting with regard to questions that she asked of the consultant but I would like to go on record as saying that I do not, I do not believe the CSD, the Greenwood CSD, should um, investigate or spend any time or energy investigating live streaming of our meetings. Um, based on contracts that I've seen for such a service, the cost is extravagant, and I don't think that there's any reason for us to do anything more than take the videos and publish them um, on our website or however um, we're intending to do. Anybody else on the board? No. Uh, we'll open it to the public then. Comments on the district manager's report, please. Yeah, I do. Thank you. Um, I only wanted to comment on the, um, where was it? Oh, the sinkhole drain kind of thingy project. Um, I noticed that geomorph design is the consultant that has already built us 3675 for the JARPA consultation. And I also noticed that previously you had allowed up to 6,000 for the cons consultation. And I just wondered if this was going, I know I'm not gonna discuss, I'm just commenting. I was wondering if the 3675 was all we have to pay for the consultation and if there was any more to be done and any more that we're going to have to pay for. And the other thing is I wanted to know how we can get copies of the plans and the applications from the consultation, from the geomorph designs. Um, I believe the consultation uh, results can be obtained from you. Yeah. Um, if you so choose, and the, uh, my understanding is that we paid for the consultation for the jar pot, but we did not pay for the construction yet, obviously. So the fees that you're seeing are just for the uh, consultation for the survey. So far, right. And I can get the copies of the plans. Uh, it, it said the the six, up to 6,000 was for plans and applications in June, in, back in June, that's what it said. And I'm trying to find out where I can get copies of the plans and applications. You can send me an email. Are they available online? You can, uh, you can request email. them from Eric. Okay, thank you. That's it. Stephen? Yeah, um, so uh, there are a number of things, but uh, and just hone in on one. Uh, we got a brief, uh, brief word about the facilities replacement, and um, I, 
quite frankly, it's not enough. This project will be probably one of the most expensive projects in Marine One CSD history. Um, in, I believe it's February 2018 or 2017, I forget, um, we had two architects bidding on this. One was a very experienced architect who bid uh, $13,000 he, he, for the full project. He had uh, uh, much public works experience, and the, the second one was an unnamed architect that turned out to be Bill Hansel. We were promised uh, by the general manager that it would be around 13000 all in, and at this point, uh, I haven't checked the latest figures, it's at least 30000 probably 40000 and we have no idea how much is uh, uh, being planned to be spent. You guys are hiding information. You're hiding information from the public. It's very unethical, and it's going to come to bite you in the butt because it's not going to stand. Um, we want to know what's going on. Um, to my analysis and many people's analysis, you've got a project there. We don't have. It's been delayed three times. There's been extensions several times, and um, the. Uh, we really don't know what's going on. But when we look at the plan, we realize you've got physical issues with the plan that uh, Bill Hansel has su submitted. It doesn't allow for the movement of traffic. It uh, is dangerously close to the stream bank. And it also would require uh, uh, vehicle traffic into the metal on the panhandle. I think it's a bust, and it, it really needs to be uh, uh, needs to be redone. But we're 400% over budget. And why isn't any questions being asked of the general manager why these, why these costs continue to run on and on and we have no answer. We have no approved plan. You got, I'm sure he's talking to you guys. I'm sure he's talking to you guys. And if they are not, then you're not doing your job. But this is an example of a corrupt contracting practice, which all of you are part of. Collusion, conspiracy. And I intend to pursue it. Thank you for your opinion, Stephen. Uh, moving on to item number eight, uh, which is the fire department matters. And uh, we'll get Chief Officer Report and Activity Summary verbally. Welcome, Chief. Thank you uh, very much. I'm glad to be here. We had a significant uh, incident involving an overturned gasoline tanker that I know you, that you're all aware of. It's uh, unfortunate that the roadway, which is continuing to be evaluated by the county, um, that you know, whether it's a lack of instruction or information, it's certainly appropriately signed, but a gasoline tanker on its way uh, to Point Reyes, uh, unfortunately, uh, a 50-foot uh, trailer went off to the side. So it was, it was carrying um, a little over 8,000 gallons of gasoline. Uh, ultimately, about 2,100 gallons uh, leaked out. Engine 58 uh, was first on scene, and I will tell you, uh, they did an excellent job uh, establishing the incident initially, and ultimately, uh, we, although we had lost some product, um, and there was certainly an environmental uh, hazard presented to the uh, soil, um, we uh, had minimal injuries really to the, to the driver, and uh, an incident that could have been much worse and more severe uh, was managed very effectively. Uh, for about a 24-hour period. Uh, that's the, that was the duration of the emergency aspect of, of it, and uh, obviously it's still going on, uh, some of the cleanup work um, that's going to occur. And there will likely be some follow-up now from the, the county. I think all of us read um, what's in store for continued evaluation of that roadway, potentially straightening it out. But uh, your firefighters uh, here uh, deal with all sorts of um, uh, accidents that occur on that roadway. There have been fatalities, there have been injuries, and it, it's certainly a trouble spot. So it's, uh, I think if, if it wasn't on anyone's radar, it sure is now. And I'm 
I'm just thankful that the incident was very well managed and a lot of cooperation, not only within this county, but other counties uh, that assisted us. Uh, we had statewide resources uh, assisting us to ensure that it was managed properly, and thankfully there was no fire or related explosion. And anytime you have that much, thousands of gallons of fuel outside of a, of a vessel, um, it's, it's really a recipe for disaster. So it's uh, really proud of everyone. Uh, there were some minor injuries uh, to fire fighters uh, relative to the exposure inhalation uh, for an extended period of the gasoline uh, vapors, but uh, every, everyone's okay. And uh, certainly, it's, as I told uh, Captain Papa Nicolau, that's one for the books. Um, so we hope to not do that again and work towards preventing it in the future. But I was very proud of the work that they did on a very dangerous and threatening incident. Um, I wanted to also mention that um, our volunteer firefighters assisted there in that effort, um, and which can be important for the extended duration. And our volunteer firefighters just recently uh, did evaluations, and these weren't comprehensive where they, they actually visited with each home, homeowner, but they, uh, they actually reviewed 2,500 homes uh, in, our, in our area for the purposes of uh, looking at defensible space. And we gave them some training and some categories to rank them with. And I guess on one hand, I'm pleased to say that out of that 2,500, there are about 250 of those that we think really need some significant follow through and, and some work and attention. But we're in the process of um, conduct, as we've mentioned before, we're going to be mailing out uh, this 25 page document um, and along with some follow up, a wildfire evacuation checklist, uh, these homeowners' guides. We're going to do some more public, uh, publicizing of this. Some of this information will be available on our website, and also these, some of these are new uh, from Fire Safe Marin, so I can pass these out. Um, Thank you. Pass these out. Uh, but I think, as uh, Eric mentioned, it's just critically important that um, we all prepare for the fire that will come. I'm pleased that there are. Uh, there's a lot of momentum with the Marin Wildfire Prevention Initiative, which is really going to be a countywide, multi-agency approach to this. As I've mentioned before, you know, we respond, one, on a, on a reactive uh, emergency basis, but we don't at all on a preventative, proactive basis. And I think this is exactly what that's going to do. And we'll be able to leverage the resources of uh, countywide agencies uh, to put focus and attention on what we need to do to better prepare for that emergency that will occur. So you're going to receive a presentation on that uh, at your meeting next month, and we'll be, uh, we'll be uh, looking forward to that. I also wanted to let you know our uh, Marin Wood uh, recruit firefighter, uh, Michael Prince, is now in his fifth week of training. So uh, things continue to go well, and hopefully he'll graduate with eight other uh, firefighter recruits. Uh, next week, and then shortly thereafter, we'll, um, we'll be assigned to uh, Engine 58. Um, we also have an upcoming uh, fire engineer exam, and we have two qualified candidates that are applying to take that e exam, and we hope uh, that process, which will uh, occur during September, uh, will appoint an engineer on October 1st. Um, wanted to mention before we get there to September that it is... Uh, Disaster Preparedness Month and the theme this year at the federal level and across the nation is prepared, not scared. So uh, oftentimes, you know, some of whether it's a, a natural disaster or man-made, they can put a lot of fear into people and in a panic-stricken environment. And with better preparation, we feel that the response both from the, the uh, community and the first responders will be much better. Um, it's the uh, the date of the next fire commission meeting, it's our next item there, but I can mention it, but it's going to be at Fire Station 52. Uh, we've held um, fire commission meetings, uh, San Rafael Fire Commission meetings, here in Marinwood in the past and thought it would be appropriate uh, for both the fire commissions to see the um, Joint Recruit Academy in operation and uh, where Marinwood and San Rafael firefighters are there training and working together right from the start and to also see the training, the level of training that goes on, and to see the facility. Uh, so they'll get a chance to get to see the training tower in operation, uh, the classroom, and the new station that we all uh, share. Um, and I think you're aware of this, but 
Um, Ringwood firefighters uh, work there and are assigned there on shifts, just as San Rafael firefighters work here on occasion. So anyway, it's a, a great benefit, and I think uh, the fire commission will certainly get to see that firsthand uh, tomorrow afternoon. So that's at 3.30? At uh, 3.30 p.m. And that's all I have. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. Any questions from the board, Chief? Thanks. How did you guys select the 2,500 residences to go? Um, How did we select? Yeah. Well, we basically, the, um, we took this survey area was the rough boundaries, Westgate to, uh, on the west, Silvera Parkway on the east, Heatherstone on the north, and Las Colindas on the south. Okay. And we did every single uh, improved structure in, in between. So this was our first pass at it, okay. and we're going to be expanding those efforts. Right. Yes. So it's like, we didn't get a knock on the door. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And you guys call or you just show up and knock? And no, actually, it's, we're not making, we'll make contact if people over there, but we're walking and driving and okay. evaluating. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice and it's, you, you can usually tell a lot just by driving up uh, or walking by a property. You know, what's maintained, what needs some help, and, and what may, is, is in really good shape. So, okay. yeah. so those that are in really good shape won't hear from you? They're going to hear. They're going to hear from us, uh, but they may not receive a, a, a notice, a violation notice. Right. Yeah, I see. Yeah, but we still want to educate everyone uh, because they need to know about alerting and warning. Uh, they need to know about what other measures they may be able to take in their home. Possibly hardening um, could have, uh, you know, some elements of it. Maybe not just defensible space and vegetation, but elements of that structure that could be improved. So, I see. you know, it's a great opportunity. So. So I, I um, spoke offline with the district manager about the um, public safety power shutdown. Yes. Um, you know, which could happen at any time, and what impact that would have on the facilities, um, the district facilities, and get back a, a very good response. But one of the things that still I don't quite understand, when Chief Roach was here, he mentioned something in a meeting um, during a power outage for the district, and he said the CERT trailer really came in handy. Do you have any idea why it came in handy? Only because it has avail there's availability of additional supplies and things. Supplies. It's you not, know, you know, like battery backups no. or anything like that. Okay. There are a couple generators. There's, there's, there, small there there's two small portable generators I see. There that are of use, I along see. with a lot of other equipment. So okay. that's probably what it is. Okay. To. Very yeah. good. Thank you. Any other board members? No, I was actually just thinking along those same lines, Jeff, that uh, it, it, there's a survey done of speaking of outages, and they're supposed to last three to five days long. People that are on, that would need emergency backup for oxygen and things yes. like that, medical reasons. Yes. We have a, a survey of how many people in the area are subject to that? So there's uh, the answer to that. Good question. There's two things going on. One, we're doing a survey um, community-wide, and PG&E is also, the, every, if, if you haven't received, and I can read you the one I've, I've received, I've counted three of them, um, individual contacts from PG&E, whether I have any special needs regarding the operation of medical devices when the uh, power is shut down. So PG&E is doing extensive outreach we're going to be complementing that and, and then work towards finding out what the specific needs of the people. That's where the difference may be. PG&E may go so far. Well, we'll tell you, you might have a problem, but not necessarily providing a solution. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think that's a role I think we can help play. And fortunately, the numbers aren't as large um, as, as you might think from our preliminary information, but it's something we definitely need to find out about because otherwise it's you know, we're going to have our hands full at the time, just dealing with all the other assorted issues, as reliant as everyone is on electronics and everything that all require power. Yeah, so, communication so you, is going to be non-existent. Absolutely. So you have access to the PG&E data? Well, PG&E is not good. sharing their data no, yet, no so we're working through a different path to try to uh, gather up the same data. They say they're going to share it, so we're, we're still working on that. Okay. 
after the show. I would also say Health and Human Services is doing a lot on this too. Uh, That's who we're coordinating with the, the county. That's the uh, additional partner we have. We're right. doing the same thing. And they've Thanks for bringing that up. Dedicated a lot of funding and uh, uh, for opportunities for low income and things like that, assistance and uh, planning and help. So they, they put out a lot of good info. So someone they actually, if they have the need and they are on oxygen, they, an oxygen machine or something that requires power. Uh, the county stepped up and actually uh, are assisting people by providing battery backups and other things that'll be helpful in that case. The county is doing that? Yes. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, you know, it just seemed to me that some information to help people. I mean, there are people who have already run out to Home Depot and plunked down a thousand dollars for a generator. Right. And then have somebody come out and look at it and say, oh, you shouldn't run that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, a little bit of help, you know, for people who do have those needs would be um, excellent and well received. So, so we're planning on doing, um, obviously, we, PG&E did an outreach that I attended a couple of weeks ago, an open house. Mm -hmm. um, I think, uh, you know, they, they had probably intentionally didn't say much other than have stations that people could go around and ask questions and uh, talk to different experts that were in the room. But I think we need to do something here locally and, and probably have a, whether we have a town hall or something that we can have uh, people come in and, and get their questions answered. Because on, on one hand, it, it could very well be three to five days. Um, but people's needs vary, you know, and so in some cases it's really minimal uh, what you may need really when it comes right down to it for power. Um, and there are people that are taking um, kind of this action to purchase, you know, more emergency supplies, uh, which we don't want to uh, minimize those efforts for additional preparedness. But in some cases, these um, could be dangerous if they're not done properly. Mm -hmm. uh, use of the emergency generators, mm -hmm. storing gasoline or, mm -hmm. and additional fuel and other things, uh, or uh, connecting to their the power grid. Or their uh, their home electrical system uh, without doing it properly with an electrician. So we just want to make sure that uh, people are safe and that there's a coordinated effort there. But also we don't want to set up so many impediments that people are you know aren't able to do it themselves anyway or not do it. So try to help them along. It would be definitely great if there is some kind of town hall that can be organized, and we would definitely make sure that space Good. is available for it. So okay, yeah. You know. Whoever cannot be reached via well, digital means can do so in person. I have PG and E has I've gotten mailers. Right. I haven't gotten any That's what via email. email. And one of the things you should do is you should make sure that they have PG and E. Uh, one of the requests is, and it's it's done in uh, writing too via the mailers. Go in and ensure that they have your all your contact information. I mean, I've gotten the whole like alerts, yeah. but not any more information about if you have special needs. That just yeah. that was only a mailer that I got. So. Good, good, okay. So, Chief, last question. Looking back to the spill on uh, Lucas Valley, yes. what's the what's the long term damage to the environment that that is like still being worked on? I'm, I'm told there's going to be a full restoration of, of the site with uh, minimal long-term effects, yes. is what the, uh, the environmental hygienists are telling us now. Part of that, the benefit, is actually the warm weather. And so a, a, dry, a, rain, dry, a lot of evaporation, yeah. So, yeah, and, an, and in a dry creek bed. So that was really a benefit, and it didn't, from what I'm told, it did not get into, down into the water table. Some of that was as a result of the firefighters' uh, initial efforts, so to try to minimize it. And um, is there any effort on part of the county to get reimbursement from the company for the work that was done? Yes, actually, San Rafael Fire is coordinating that, uh, the reimbursement, and so all of our time and effort uh, associated with Marinwood is reimbursable under under state law, and so the trucking company is assume or assume full responsibility for the incident. And um, that's including the environmental cleanup. All of, all of the cleanup, no, all related awesome. costs. Yeah, that's I um, don't want to uh, guesstimate, but it's going to be a very expensive incident. Yeah. Yeah. So, like the kids can go in the creek. Because I've told my girls they're not in the creek until yeah. here. Okay. Well, you may not want them to go there for other reasons, but hopefully. <laughs> no, the reason we have nets and stuff like 
we go down the creek, but I told them because of the accident, right. we can't go down that's, the creek. That's a good so idea. That, that's I'm, a getting, very I'm getting good the good advice from you. Yes. Right. Good advice. <laughs> so given there are no more questions, I think, from the board to the chief, are there any public questions? Um, I just have one comment. A couple weeks ago, when I was walking through the panhandle, a dog walker told me that there were signs up in the panhandle saying that dog walkers should not allow their dogs to go into the creek because there was an oil spill in the creek. And Chief, you just said that there was no effect. No, ultimately, there will be no residual effect, but, but they're still was, cleaning it up. There was oil in the water. Gasoline, and it's not in the uh, water. Gasoline. Gasoline, and it was in dry soil. And okay, it did not, so, I'm told it did not reach the water table. Okay, because yeah. that's what the signs were supposedly saying. Keep your dogs out of the water yeah. because there's... They just don't want to take any chances. So okay. everyone's being very cautious, which we're recommending. And oh, just stay away from, from the area. Keep good. your pets away from the area. Until well, this all, was down all here in the handle, yeah. you know, three, four, or five miles away. Right. Well, they're just being uh, very cautious. Okay. Are, are you Thank aware you. of any signs that people are I, I really haven't seen any of anybody's bras in here. It's on the, it's on the, I've seen two of them. It's on that sign right where the um, fireman picnic area is. It's, it was just a piece of paper. I don't know if it's still there. but. And we're not even sure that's official. Can we, I don't know. We, I don't know. We, 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 we did exactly. <laughs> It's officially unofficial. Okay. Yes. yes. Um, Stephen? Yeah. So. First of all, I want to commend uh, the chief uh, because those signs were out literally within hours of the incident, which I was very impressed with, and I'm, I'm grateful for that. Second of all, I, I, I do drive out that area time to time, and I noticed that it was actually the roadway had appeared to have collapsed right where, it, 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 right where they were driving, and so I assume that was uh, part of the uh, reason for the incident, um, and is the county responsible for that? The condition of the roadway in that case, or is it still the trucker? You don't know. Well, I, I know that the um, the trucking company will be responsible for restoring the site okay. uh, completely, and that'll include the roadway. Okay. Uh, you may recall a couple of years ago we had a similar incident on Sir Francis Great. The roadway bed actually had to be replaced. Um, on an emergency repair. So in this case, the county will make sure that the roadway is restored as well. Okay. So the other th comment I'd like to make is, even though it's a dry creek bed, it's still part of uh, the Miller Creek uh, system, and you dump 2,100 gallons, which I think was in the paper, uh, there's, there's liquid flowing, and I, I find it kind of hard to believe that there was no, no uh, gasoline leaked into the creek. I concur with you, uh, uh, though fuel tends to evaporate and it's not as bad as some kinds of environmental damage. So I'm crossing my fingers that uh, we have a good outcome there, but I certainly wouldn't characterize it as minimal because I'm sure it's going to be significant up there. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but anyhow, thank you for your efforts. Thank you very much, Chief. And um, just for the record, next uh, commission, fire commission meeting will be taking place at the San Rafael Fire Department. Um, Station 52 at tomorrow. 52 Union, August 14th at 3.30 p.m. Thank you very much. Um, and so moving on to item I, which is the park and rec matters. Um, we will be reviewing the draft minutes from the commission meeting on July 23rd. Um, do the board members have any questions? No questions from the board. Um, questions from the public on the commission meetings? Go ahead, Linda. Yeah, there was, um, there was a comment in the minutes that I had made, and I was talking to the commission about my injury after stepping, or after tripping over that two and a half uplifted, two and a half inch uplifted sidewalk. Of, co of course, the minutes don't really say a lot, but in the minutes there was reference to the uh, panhandle. And I specifically said that my injury happened on the pedestrian lane at 
Miller Creek Road. So that should be corrected. It was, I was not, I didn't hurt myself at the Panhandle. I hurt myself at Miller Creek Road. Um, thank you, Linda, Stephen. Uh, yeah, so um, I did get the video of the meeting. Um, and actually, I did not see that meeting, but the meeting before, there were some extensive um, uh, extensive remarks on the, uh, the panhandle as well as the replacement facility, which were not noticed in the agenda. And so they were Brown Act violations. It, it totaled roughly 20 minutes of, of talking. Now, I know you guys don't seem to think that that's important, but I actually do as a member of the public. I want to know what's happening um, with the parks. Um, I, I will have, I, I'll have some comments once, uh, further comments once uh, Luke finishes his uh, presentation. Um, next item is the pool of the service project, authorized staff to initiate informal bidding process, and uh, the an action item for the board. Um, I'll let Eric introduce the item, please. Yeah, this was something that we talked quite a bit about during the budgeting process and said it's a very strong possibility. Um, coming into the final evaluations on it, we're definitely going to need to resurface it prior to the next pool season. Uh, with that, Luke and I certainly want to get moving on putting out uh, notices uh, via the UPCCAA um, so we can get bids in. Contractors are filling up uh, rather quickly because this is you know, going to be a winter work job for us. We're going to drain down the pool and do everything else so we can get it done in time for the start of next pool season. Uh, I'm giving you a range. Um, we have gotten some you know, kind of loose estimates, uh, but are, I say loose, but are very uh, representative of what we expect. It's going to be somewhere between 115 to 135, depending on final work that needs to be done once they get the pool drains, you know, many patches or whatever else might need to be occurred. Uh, what I am suggesting here is obviously to authorize us to go into the informal bidding and to enter into contract for needed work at a cost not to exceed 135 and then I put a note in here should bids come in higher than this amount uh, they'll be presented to the board for further consideration at the end of the day there's not a lot of companies who do this I'm not expecting a lot of bids but it will go through the process as prescribed uh, within the uh, CUP UP UPCC, you that one. Uh, so I, you know, I, I broke down some kind of simple math. One of the things that we had talked about during the budgeting process was that I had earmarked fifty-five thousand dollars for the community center kitchen, but that was really going to be based on if we actually had to do the pool or not. What I would recommend is that uh, I'm going to present you with an amendment uh, shortly down the road at a future meeting where we're going to pool the fifty-five thousand set for that. We're going to add 135,000 for the pool resurface, or if we have final bids in by that time, whatever the actual cost is. Uh, plus, it's going to be about 50,000 for the storm drain when you add in all of the fees from the county and the other environmental agencies and everything else. So, uh, right now, the current budget actually is projected to have about a $440,000 net gain. Uh, you take out the kitchen and add these other two, it'll reduce it to about a $310,000 net gain. As such, I would recommend we do this through an operating expense in the current budget and not look at some of the reserves that we've stockpiled for the last couple of years. Thank you, Eric. Uh, questions from the board? Uh, this is pretty straightforward. It needs to get done, though, right? It, it, it's, it's if we want to continue time. allowing having the pool open, it needs to get done. Um, technical questions. Let's first do the public comment and then we'll have the motions. Do um, you want to do any questions? You should make a motion second and then we have to stop. Yeah, go right ahead. Do you have any questions? I just want to confirm that we have to pay for that whole uh, drainage. We, we're not paying any money from anybody to help us. Oh, DPW is uh, the storm drain, you mean? Yeah. I thought you meant like the drainage of the pool. No, 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 the storm drain. Uh, no, that's on us. Uh, for the time being. There's a couple cases floating around in Supreme Court that we're keeping. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that there was no new news on no. that. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, so just um, just for the record, we adopted a policy recently that uh, modified uh, how we um, go, uh, how we request uh, bids for um, uh, for a couple of projects, mm -hmm. and um, this is in uh, following the Uniform Public Construction Cost Accounting Act. And uh, this basically gives the board um, the ability to, or actually we already did um, give you the right to pursue uh, uh, projects up to $60,000 uh, using uh, public agencies, so the community's own resources, uh, so our staff basically, um, and um, public projects in the amount of 200 or less uh, 200,000 or less uh, may use informal or formal bidding procedures uh, set forth in section 22032B or C of the Act. And then anything over 200,000 must use uh, formal bidding procedures. So um, Marinwood Community Services District is not the only district that follows this, um, this process. There are countless other agencies that um, have adopted policies following this act. Um, this by no means is um, anything shady or uh, inappropriate. It follows laws of this state. Um, it means to expedite project delivery and minimize the expenses to the agencies. Um, Can I add on to that? Yeah. To be clear, this will actually get posted uh, and noticed through four different trade organizations and journals, uh, two of them more local, two of them more state, plus Luke and I know the small handful of members who actually do this, so we will send it to them directly as well in the event that these guys are pretty specialized and aren't necessarily looking at trade journals like that, so we want to make sure they're aware of this need and uh, they provide us a form of it. Thank you for additional information. Um, so having um, answered technical questions from the board, we'll open it for public comment and then uh, go through the motions. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry to ask again, but I'm not exactly sure. The uh, district manager said that the pool is on us. I think that's what you said. Does that mean when you say on us, it's not measure A? She was actually asking about the storm drain. If, if the district had to incur all of the fees for the oh. storm drain. Okay, so the pool then is measure A. I'm not recommending it as measure A, no. Oh, okay. And then um, when you mentioned posted in four journals, what was posted? Was uh, it like a- Nothing has been posted in accordance with the with the bidding laws that fall underneath the California Uniform Public Construction Cost Accounting Act, for our agency, there are four different trade journals and organizations that you bid through for a job that falls underneath this costing threshold. So those will be noticed, plus Luke and I will actually uh, reach out to companies who we know directly who oh. do this. Okay, well that's why I assume. They're assumed. formally worked with this somewhere out of like what, Pleasanton or Okay, I, I assume that, but I wanted to make sure that I understood because we're not doing RFPs anymore. Uh, it'll be an RFP of sorts. Of sorts. Mm -hmm. So a smaller version, Correct. a more simple version. Correct. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Stephen? Yeah, um, well, we have to kind of look at the track record. I, you know, I'm actually kind of appalled that. Uh, such a project. It, I mean, first of all, let me let me start off with something kind to say. I'm glad there's a little bit more rigor being placed in the uh, bidding process. I hope it is truly arm's length bidding and not uh, you know friends of friends bidding. Um, we have to look at, unfortunately, the um, track record here. I mentioned earlier how we're 400% of budget on the uh, maintenance facility. I think we do not have a single response on that, uh, why it's so high, um, nor do we, we know much about that project at all. Um, when you went to this, what I think is a questionable uh, 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 policy, 
the very first thing that came up was uh, uh, this project in the in the meadow, and um, no other bids were 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 called. There was just one contractor called on that, that as far as I know, and so there seems to be a lack of rigor. We need rigor going forward. Three bids, absolutely, they have to be arm's length bids. Um, we've, we've got really a very poor track record of containing costs, and I think I would feel more comfortable uh, if we had uh, additional eyes looking at this project that may have a little bit more uh, construction management experience um, uh, than our general manager um, because I think it could save the district uh, some money. Um, also, you know, we're a small, small agency and what has been requested uh, in this new policy is basically, uh, you know, giving the credit card to, uh, to the uh, general manager to go out and purchase most anything that he needs without um, without rigor, and I, I, I mean the evidence is already in. It's it's not a good idea, and please, please take care of uh, the people's business. Uh, thank you for your opinion, Stephen. Um, um, let's go through the motions then. Uh, may I have a motion to approve um, the managers? Recommendation to initiate the informal bidding process. Yes, I'll make a motion to authorize staff to initiate the informal bidding process in accordance with California Uniform Public Construction House Cost Accounting Act and enter into a contract for needed work at a cost not to exceed one hundred and thirty five thousand. Thank you, Jeff, and thank you, Savan. Um, any further discussion from the board? Seeing none, I call the question. All in favor? Aye. Um, aye. aye. And so we move to item number three. Uh, no, yes, three. Park and Rec Commission bylaws amendment. And that's another action item. Uh, would you like to go? Sure. Uh, the commission, um, obviously, right now is, uh, was pretty small. It's down to three. Recently added a fourth. Uh, and these have been three kind of long standing commissioners and there's also some meetings that were missed and one of the things that had come up through the commission was they really wanted uh, other avenues besides uh, uh, simply going on tours or facility uh, visits by which they might be able to learn about some of the district's needs from a staff perspective um, so we brainstormed some of those and then uh, they wanted a little bit more leeway on if they felt tours or reports or presentations were what was most appropriate in any given year. Uh, however, they needed to do a bylaws amendment to make that because the bylaws kind of specifically stated as we're in here, inspect park and recreation department facilities annually during summer months and develop a list of recommended improvements. So this bylaws amendment uh, basically gives them the option of doing inspections, receiving reports, or doing all of the above, and it also doesn't limit it to happening during the summer months, um, especially when it comes to reporting, and that actually came as a staff request because during summer months to be also putting together presentations and reports is asking a lot for staff that are already uh, much more than chin deep in our single busiest time of year for the record park department. Uh, all the commission has approved this uh, bylaws amendment as presented to be recommended to the board for formal adoption. Thank you, Eric. And as a liaison to the commission, I did attend the presentation, and um, it really seems like a, a very viable alternative given um, the long term of most commissioners and also the ability to look at the issues more long term rather than a random point in time. Um, can I add, the other thing that was also said too is, uh, I mean, commissioners can always reach out to staff to meet us at any facility during any time, doesn't have to happen during a meeting, um, to learn more about what's going on with our parks or areas. Yeah. Any technical questions from the board? Not technical, but the, um, the idea behind this is to add a set of eyes to these potential improvements as opposed to replacing 
the park and rec going out and doing this. Is that correct? Uh, you mean in just the, in general of informing the Park and Rec Commission about facilities? Right, in other words, adding reports as opposed to eliminating their review, Correct. their personal review, correct? correct. Well, okay. not, I assume it's just moving it so it can go anytime, but it doesn't have to be during the summer. It doesn't have to be their reports. Staff can come to them also and say, Right, but there might they not, uh, staff. but that's why if you look at this, it's, you know, of uh, and or. Uh, yeah. They may decide as a commission not to do a particular facility visit and would rather instead receive a report and presentation on that. Okay. Yeah. Well, any questions for you? No, this is, again, straightforward. Okay. It's um, adding to the commission, basically. It, it gives them, it gives more, them, it gives them more options on how they can continue to learn mm -hmm. and be educated about the district facilities and, and, and some of the areas. points were brought up that you know maybe at some point discussing all tennis courts all together might make more sense than Correct. discussing Correct. it could be topical here. as opposed to geographical right. yeah. mm -hmm. so um, how do, how does one control the staff going out and doing these reviews is it going to be set on a schedule are they just going to be left to their own devices what do you mean I, I, I guess I'm not following okay um, what's to say that the park staff, staff is actually going to go out there and review these things from an improvement standpoint as opposed to a maintenance standpoint and generate a report? Well, the reports would be presentations that would be given to the park and rec. I understand group. that. What's so to say that they're going to even be done? Who's going to manage that? So there are, there are pictures that are part of the presentation. Um, and but I then, guess I'm not making myself clear. I think I, think I understand your question, Jeff. <laughs> All right. Please. Um, so uh, I think what is yet to be determined is exactly the schedule that we're going to use moving forward. But this mm -hmm. last month, uh, the Panhandle and Mini Park were chosen by the commission as the next site that they wish to see a report on. Mm -hmm. And I can, you know, put a report together and present it to the commission on that particular site uh, this next month. We'll do a different one, and then uh, what is open-ended is whether we continue to do the site visits as have been scheduled over the, the specific sites that we have historically visited mm -hmm. in this report form, uh, or whether we can have the flexibility to change to, uh, I will, if the commission requests it, I could do a report on the status of all of the tennis court or all of the playground facilities. Um, or the buildings or the turf or whatever, we can do it by a category. Okay. So it's going to be, I think, still in discussion is from what I understand um, what the commission is interested in hearing mm -hmm. um, and they'll give direction to staff to then report on, on the topic at hand. In the meantime, we're following the, uh, the list that we have historically done in the site visits of. So right. to the okay, location. so there's some sort of schedule as to, you know, the mini park and then the tennis courts, etc. Exactly. Et it's, it's a question of who goes, you know, the staff or the commission or both, basically, is that? I think yes, the, right now um, they've opted to uh, have the option to be given a presentation with visuals and a report, and if desired, we could do a site visit or commissioners could make their own visits out to the site to gain information. There's just more options depending on what the needs are and what they want to know about. Okay. Thank you. Um, any other questions from the board? Uh, public comment then? Yeah. Um, I'll make the comments all together, not asking for discussion or anything. I kind of agree with Mr. Mailer about, you know, the, how do you do it, how do you organize it, who's looking at what, is it the commission, is it staff? Personally, I think, and, and it's, I know it's because we've only had three Park and Rec commissioners available, so a lot of meetings have been canceled. And I know that we didn't, uh, we didn't have meetings, uh, they didn't have Park and Rec meetings early enough to do the walkthroughs, to start the walkthroughs. But I feel that the walkthroughs by the commission are really, really important. And I appreciate Luke's uh, work on his presentation, but it must have taken you you know, a lot of extra hours to do that. And there were still tons and tons of questions because the commissioners were not walking through the panhandle. And I remember hearing comments for at least 10 minutes about 
the Miwok pictures and stories that are on the pedestals. Had the commissioners walked through and seen them, they wouldn't have had any questions. We wouldn't have had to worry about that. I mean, the question could have been immediately answered. Um, I just talked to a, a lady last week about some holes that are in the bushes at the mini park that children can easily run through and go straight down into the creek from. I didn't notice that, but with the commission going out on a walkthrough, you've got more eyes. You've got not just Luke's eyes, who may be looking at a different area or a different think process about, ooh, what do we have to repair? Oh, the, the turf or, you know, whatever. We might be thinking about, and I recall a few years ago, somebody saying, oh, this needs to be painted. This looks shabby. We need lights, blah, blah, blah. So all I'm saying is that I personally think that the commission is letting us down. I don't believe that the commission is that interested in going on walkthroughs. It sounds to me like they would rather give Luke all the work to do. And I don't believe that Luke is going to look at things the way 10 different people will look at them. Um, and whether things need to be repaired or whether things need to be um, enhanced or whether they you know, need to be eliminated or why are we spending so much money on this when we don't need it, things like that. I just, I just think this is, um, I, I just think this is not a really good idea to cut way back on the commissions, that the commissioners not doing walkthroughs. I think it's a really, really bad idea. And I don't see any benefit from changing the bylaws. This, this bylaw change leaves things up in the air. Oh, well, maybe and, maybe or. Well, who's going to decide? How are you going to decide whether it's the wording here is something about as deemed appropriate by the commission. You know, a lot of it is kind of wishy-washy. So I'm just saying, I, it just, it seems silly. And I would prefer to have a commission who's here every month that gets involved in our community and who sees all of our facilities, understands the facilities, and who put their heads together. You know, not just one person, not just depend on Luke. That's a lot of work for him. Well, thank you. Thank you. Stephen? Well, I uh, kind of have a love fest here. First of all, uh, I think uh, Jeff's concerns are, are really valid. You know, how, do, how can we ensure uh, that things will get done? And Luke's need for flexibility, I think, are, is reasonable. Um, and I can certainly understand his perspective, and also I understand uh, Linda's perspective, because you do want the eyeballs. I want people uh, who are serving the CSD in uh, political positions to uh, go out and, and make their own assessments of things and not simply take staff recommendations. That's called representation. I want, I, I, I want them to represent the public. And, Quite frankly, I want you to listen to us, but uh, maybe that's that's hoping for too much. But but um, I I thought about this. Um, this is going to come up later, but it, it all ties into one of my points. Um, I, uh, I I know somebody who works at the, in, in county parks. I also worked in in a park system in my youth, and what we had what, the way we organized our days and our weeks were rigorous checklists because much of the, the stuff was routine. And I would suggest that uh, th there be a rigorous reporting function. I'm sure that the, the fire department operates this way, but I think the park department needs to operate this way from a managerial standpoint. Once the, we've got proper reporting, then that can provide the uh, feedback to the, the, uh, the, the community, what's being done. Um, I'll just bring it up in a little bit. I know Luke's got uh, a bunch of uh, email messages about water fountains being broken. And when you think about it, we don't have that much land here, much parkland uh, that we manage here. There's no reason why we should be chasing down problems, why we can't be more proactive. 
so where we can find the holes before people fall down and it becomes a problem or find the, the broken um, pipes or broken drains before it becomes an issue. I think this is a managerial uh, problem more than it is uh, a staff issue or even uh, a commission issue. The commission should be overseeing the activities. That's all I have to say. Thank you. Um, and so we'll go through the motions. We have the motion to approve the bylaws amendment. Um, motion to approve bylaws as amended for our three commissioners' responsibilities. Thank you. Is there a second? Hearing none, the motion fails. And so we move to um, item number. And so for the record, um, we'll be going back to the commission with the information that the board, the commission, if the bylaws are not amended, and therefore um, in-person inspections will have to take place. Sure. I just, uh, yeah, well, and they may want to come back and present to the board. I mean, I think uh, personally I agree with the board's, or with the commission's recommendation, and I also recognize uh, the experience of the people who are on the commission with the former park superintendent from the city of San Rafael, as well as another person who worked in parks for uh, the city of San Francisco for many, many years and now serves as a senior open space planner. And I think they do have a lot of thought that goes into this, and I don't agree that this gives them the opportunity to just say, oh, we're just not going to pay any attention to that. I think they wanted additional avenues and also felt that the uh, tours and inspections didn't provide a lot of value. So. I think that, um, I think the language of the amendment might be a little polished a little bit to make sure that there is engagement of the uh, Park and Rec Commission um, as well as the staff and that we could probably move forward with it at some time if that language is changing. Okay, well, I'm open to giving them suggestions. Understood. Uh, and so we move on to item number I-4, which is the Recreation and Park Maintenance Activity Reports. And that's not an action item, so we're reviewing. Um, and I don't think Luke has to read what um, we all reviewed. Um, I'm sure he would be happy to answer questions that the board may have. Um, anyone? Um, with regard to Victor, when exactly is his departure date? Uh, I believe it's August 30th. Oh, so it's not September. It's the end of August. Uh, yeah, just, yeah, basically the end of August. Early September. I see. Is there anything planned for him? Uh, there is, yeah, internal. He didn't want anything. Um, oh, no stinking board members, huh? Uh, <laughs> I believe not. So, yeah, there will be a staff um, get together for Victor's request um, mm -hmm. before his departure date uh, coming up. So, I see. Okay. We'll go on or Fair enough. We'll listen. Absolutely. Anybody else from the board? No. Along the lines of the uh, water fountains being constantly plugged, yes, constantly being worked on, is there a way we can get rid of them? The water fountains? Yes. Uh, yeah. Taken sure. out in total well, to get alleviate <laughs> constant, constant maintenance. Um, I don't show that I'm ready to abolish the water fountains altogether from our facilities. Uh, the crew is um, used to unplugging clogged water fountain drains. Uh, people sometimes feed their dogs in the water fountains. Kids throw sand and dirt in them. Yeah. It's a normal part of uh, parks maintenance that parks employees all over uh, are familiar with. So it's just part of the normal routine. And, um, we do get complaints from, from certain people more than others, but uh, it's a constant, uh, you know, it's something that we deal with. Yeah. So, no. I, I think given the number of children that are here during summer months uh, for summer camp, it's... How many do you know use the water fountain? Most oh. bring water bottles. Almost everybody in the park has a water bottle. They don't know it's no, no, no. And they get the refill. And I, I think it's uh, it's one of those things that uh, 
I'll, I'll leave it up to the staff to maybe make a call on how they deal with water fountains. Water it fountains are better than 7,852 plastic water bottles. Thank you. <laughs> or maybe possibly to be another way. <laughs> yeah, recycled. Um, any cover. There's probably another. Uh, these water fountains are are pretty old, um, and I'm sure there's some new designs that uh, mm. possibly uh, have have a better way to prevent some of the clogging and something we can definitely look into. It would be costly, but yeah. um, in the meantime, the complaints about the clogs seem to be coming from one individual in the community, and we address it as often as we can. And um, yeah. uh, and so, you know, it, it seems like if there's a, a real problem, we definitely can address it, and I, I, I think it's yet to be determined that there's a real problem. Yeah. Okay. Anything else from the board to look? Sort of a silly question. Some of these water fountains have these rather elaborate platforms and stuff that go up and make rocks. Is that? Is there any? It would seem to me that that makes it easy for dogs to jump up on it and drink from. It. Is there any design change that could be made, or could there be a, a lower spigot for dogs <laughs> so they're not hopping up on the? One that's used by human beings. There's a lot of I mean, there are a lot of design <laughs> options uh, for sure. I and mean, we have to look at you know different water fountains that have the the lower spigot on them. I mean, like I said, these are these are pretty old, and you know maybe we're due for an update. But um, yeah, it's something we just address in the future. Never thought of it before until tonight. Yeah. Okay. Uh, public comments. Any public comments? Yeah. 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 And I know a lot of elderly people who walk through the park that get dehydrated very easily. And you could kill some of us. Oh, maybe you want to do that. I use the water fountain also. Yeah, but thank you for um, keeping the water fountains. I appreciate that. Stephen? So what is there, four water fountains in our, our entire district? We have three staff plus a manager. and you. I mean, even the, the notion that it would be entertained that you get rid of the water fountain. I mean, I, thankfully, the, the majority of the board has has a good sense to keep it. But but I I, I really would like you to to consider that conversation. Now, the fact that one person is taking the time to repeatedly ask all uh, ask about the water fountains does not mean that that person is being difficult. That person understands, and actually, I, I could tell you who it is. You probably, I don't want to say if you, you're not talking about him. He has a military background. He understands maintenance. And this is, this is the kind of thing that really should be part of regular maintenance, like emptying the trash. If I were to give a grade to the, the maintenance department, I, I love the guys. They're, they're, they're hard workers, but I do not think that they empty trash enough. I don't think they there there's uh, a lack of ongoing maintenance. There's a lack of rigor and discipline in their um, in their work days. And I I know that the, the county staff has a different way of operations. And maybe we need to bring in someone from the county, or perhaps we should outsource our our maintenance uh, parks and maintenance staff completely to an outside contractor because I'll tell you they you know if they can do it if kids making fifteen dollars an hour at McDonald's can uh, can do their job our guys can do it and the, the only difference is 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 the managerial um, uh, techniques in making sure that the jobs get done. I don't consider these reports much of anything this is the kind of reports that gary gave and we're kind of continuing on a path of of uh of you know do the minimum but i i, I would like us to hold our heads high and 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 look how we can improve our park we don't have a lot of park space we it, the the website says we have three parks they're including the little mini park it's really Marinwood park and creekside park and then open space and so why is it that we can't get these things done? I can count four, 
four water fountains. Probably two of them are problematic. I, I frankly, I don't want to even hear excuses about it. Thank you, Stephen. Um, the date of the next Park and Rec Commission meeting will be August 27. Um, moving on to item J, which is new and other business, a request for future meeting agenda items from the board. None. Um, I'd like to reintroduce a notion um, that we brought up in the past. I don't think it ever actually happened, and that is um, for the benefit of the board and to some extent the staff have a, um, a list of periodic activities so that we can all anticipate them. We know when things are coming, budget reviews, annual audits, CalPERS reports, et cetera, et cetera. Things that you know, don't happen every month, mm -hmm. uh, reviews, those kind of things, so that we have it someplace internally where we can look at it and say, oh, hey, this is coming up. We need to start paying attention to it or get out in front of it. So um, I've got at least a strong man that I'd like to put out there for evaluation. It'll certainly need other people's input, but I would like to see if we can get that published. I'm sure between you and Eric, there will be a nice foundation of uh, how you have events. OK, well, we'll work on that. Was that good? Um, no, there's, I, I've got one for items of interest. Okay. Um, I would like to suggest or inquire if Ford would be interested in uh, more of a strategic exercise of a long-term plan of, um, you know, where, where do we see Marinwood CSD going in the, last, in the next five, ten years, or even longer? Um, what kind of um, a role do we see for the CSD? Um, what kind of spatial planning should there be taking place? Uh, what kind of programmatic um, evaluation should should um, be undertaken? Um, just wanted to see if there is any interest. Okay. That would have to be a public meeting. Yes, it would, it would be you know, part of maybe our board meeting um, so we can at least understand what kind of structure we want and then as we hash um, out the details and go into the meet we would have public meetings. Well, that would be something that I would definitely say if this is going to move forward we need to make sure that the, as many people in this community who are willing to attend, attend and we get input from them as well and that sufficient notice is given and a proper time for such a meeting can happen so that we can get as many seat people in the seats as possible. But yeah, that, that all, it never hurts to plan and to strategize. <coughs> Anything else? No, I'm not sure it would be next meeting, maybe two or three meetings. Yes, yeah, yeah, so that yeah, we can yeah. have yeah. a public notice. Yeah. No, again, uh, at first I would present to the board just the bullet points of areas of attention. Okay. And that sounds good. Nothing else from the board? Mm -hmm. Okay. Public? Steve, do you have something? Yeah. Okay, because I, I'm sorry, I missed something, so I need to go back. I can wait until I just see that. Okay, Stephen? Uh, First of all, uh, I, I just want to say I, I, I like, like Jeff's, Jeff's suggestion of having a, a, a list of upcoming items. And I also like um, Isabella's suggestion, however, I would say open it up to the, uh, the community because after all, you're not going to be sitting in that seat uh, forever. And uh, it's uh, something that the whole community should uh, take an interest in. Who knows how many people will get to participate, but it's certainly uh, appropriate to discuss uh, the future with the entire community. Um, lastly, um, I, I, I want to suggest that we, 
that you do something on transparency. Jeff brought up a point uh, about uh, streaming, web streaming, and um, uh, I understand where, where he's coming from. It, it, you can spend a lot of money with outside companies uh, to web stream. Um, however, as you know, I have the technical knowledge and I publish all of these meetings. So to start with transparency, it's very easy. Uh, you just simply upload the meetings to uh, YouTube. It's free and uh, it really doesn't take that much time. If anyone needs some training, I'd be happy to uh, train them. As far as web streaming goes, we have the capabilities to web stream. I could web stream and I think that camera can web stream. I don't know if it's necessary. But um, if there's uh, honestly uh, an effort uh, to uh, be more transparent, that would be the way to go. Lastly, um, I'm very disappointed at the fire commission. Uh, they spend, you know, the fire department spends half our budget, and yet we have no recordings of what occurs there. Now, Chief Gray is a good man, and I, I like his reports, but it's all secondary, and we really need these meetings as well uh, to be recorded and uh, available to the public. So, um, uh, you know, how can we grow for the future? Um, you need to start having a conversation with the public. We're, there's 6,000 of us in the Valley and uh, you're seeing only two people show up to these meetings and however many who see my videos. So, um, a little, little more effort would be appreciated. Linda? Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't hear whether or not you said the date of next Park and Recreation Commission. Yes, I did. August 27th. And is that scheduled? Yes. It just okay. says well, the date of next. Well, I know. I, I can read it, but I thought they were doing it every other month. No. I thought that's what they were. No, wanted. they're not. No, that, that is not true. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Um, item number K, recognitions and board member items of interest. If I may start us off and thank uh, John Campo for um, uh, working with the county and uh, giving us constant updates on the project of the Ponte Trail. Um, I think it's a um, tremendous benefit to uh, our community. So thank you, John Campo. Shout out. It's too bad that we won't be able to recognize him in the lasting way. Anybody else? I have an item of interest. I'll pass that out. Let me take a couple. This is an update on um, the Marin <coughs> Emergency Radio Authority. Linda? Um, these should be coming out monthly, and I just wanted to make sure um, that the board and staff was aware, or at least had the opportunity to look at this um, short, the brief status report. Um, the first item is about a change order, um, which was to add multi-protocol label switching technology to NERA. Um, this is something that was introduced at a late time. Um, there are lots of reasons why this makes a tremendous amount of sense, but it's also expensive technology. Um, one, of the major, um, one of the major benefits of this is um, when things go wrong within the system, you don't have to go out and visit a tower. You can actually do a lot of remote access and fix the things. Uh, multi Multi-protocol label switching also enables video and other um, types of information to go across the lines. So again, that's something that they're looking at. It's taken quite some time. Uh, there are definite benefits. There are also costs. <clears throat> um, the environmental impact report um, continues to, I would say, crawl forward. It's behind. Um, every month there's a little bit um, of movement, but not completion at this point in time. When that um, report eventually completes, and by the way, 
the August meeting for Mira uh, governing board was canceled due to lack of uh, any further information. Um, it'll probably push out to September before we actually get our hands on it and they can start to open it up for public comment. In the meantime, the Mirror Board has um, done significant amount of outreach to communities to make sure, or to hopefully make sure, that there isn't a lot of um, questioning and concerns. Um, in other words, they tried to get out ahead of uh, this as much as possible. Um, I talked to, um, is it Chief? No. Um, Senate. What's Chief Senate? Chief Senate, okay. Um, who has, um, I guess, been at least gave me the impression that San Rafael is helping to make sure that we're taking inventory of our radios as we look forward to the new, um, um, the new radios coming out, some of which could actually be um, put in our hands ahead of time and do all of the uh, inventory for the new um, administrator, that, uh, Maura Griffin. So those are things that are happening right now. Again, unfortunately, there is no August meeting, so there'll be nothing to report at the next uh, board meeting. Thank That's you. it. Yep. Anything else? I, I asked a couple of questions about the hearing. Is it really actually should have been part of um, the meeting? Is it to the board or is it to? I just I want to understand what what Mira. It's it's not just the fire department. It's also the police agencies that use this system as well. Yes. Right. So so there's uh, I imagine surve video surveillance capabilities, uh, roadway condition capabilities, uh, probably wildfire. Um, I mean, there's a lot there's a lot to mirror than just a radio set. Well, <clears throat> I believe it's primarily to make sure that all agencies in, in our county. Um, including now uh, transportation agencies um, can get on groups and share information in an emergency situation. So it's all, but what I'm saying is it's a surveillance network as well as a communications network. I don't know that. To tell you the truth, I don't know that, Stephen. Surveillance? Surveillance, video, like, I, yeah, at this yeah, point in time, my the roadway cameras, that sort of thing. At this point in time, I believe the technology in the current Mira does not support that much in terms of video. This MPLS that they're talking about, that I mentioned before, does support video streaming. Um, you know, which could come in handy in certain situations, certainly. Um, <clears throat> but. That is, a, that is part of the next, or considered as part of the next gen system, which is still pre-designed at this point. Well, I, 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 I'm gonna be suspect that it, this, it's, it's uh, I, th I think it, you actually do have purpose. a contact information there, so that might be a good idea to, to reach them directly with that question, since neither of us can answer that. Um, all right. Um, Item number L, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second? And all in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Go. Yes,